And we're back. And in the interim, what I've done is I've cleared out this area and I'm turning it all into a vacuum. I've decided I'm just going to vacuum this all out so I can store my petroleum in a way that won't actually give off any heat. Uh, at the same time, I went along the top over here and I queued up some dig commands to get rid of all this junk. Um, actually, I'm going to change the priority on those down to a level 3 just because I don't really want them interfering with any of the build commands or build and dig commands I'm going to be passing out. So we'll get rid of all of you down to 3. I've also queued up a whole bunch of more build commands over this end to clear out this top half as well. Yeah, we'll get rid of you all back to 3 as well. I don't want you interfering with what we're planning. Um, also queued up a few here to wall this in. It turns out this area here has a bunch of timber, thimble reed in it. And I want to make sure that timber reed actually doesn't cook. And it currently is because the insulation was broken along here, the abyssalite. So the heat was leaking into this area and it's basically stifled all of those. I'll fix them later. It'll be nice to have some wild thimble reed. They really, really do help out in the late game getting insulation. If you've got to pave water for it, I think I worked it out. It's like six tons of water to make one insulated pipe out of insulation. If you have to grow the reed fiber using hydroponics, it is so expensive. Now, back to the mistakes. Uh, I have made one enormous mistake here. This one right here. It turns out when I vacuumed out, I left that door there closed. So there's now 27.7 kilos of carbon dioxide stuck in there. And I need to find a way of getting it out without releasing it into here, because that would give it access to the magma. Uh, yeah, so I need to get a vacuum there. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that just yet. I think the plan will be... Yeah, I'm going to have to delete a bunch of automation here. I'm miss missing automation wires in here anyway, so I was going to have to redo those. So we will get rid of you. And then we're going to put in a ventilation pump right here. Oh, actually, I should have put in one tile more over. Actually, that might be a better idea. Give me an automation wire. Yeah, yeah we'll make you a yeah, steel, doesn't matter. Actually, that way. What I'm thinking I'm going to do here is put in a ventilation pump in here and then wall it in. And then once it's walled in, I'll open the door and the vacuum pump in here should be able to take it out. I just want to seal it off so that the, all the gases will be trapped in this area at the very worst. And I might even wall this in again at the top. Now, what am I giving off on that? I'm giving off a red signal. Yes, that is what we do want to do. Perfect. So, in this case, we can deconstruct this. Oh, and we're also going to want to put in a tile about here. Here. Yeah. And I'm also going to need a door. Okay, so the plan here will be... I'll wall this in here with the door. I'll wall this in here at the top. Lock this door once this is all built. And then I'll trip this switch here, which will crank open this door. 27 kilos of carbon dioxide is going to leak out. And when that happens, the gas pump in there should be able to extract it. Yeah, put that there. Then, of course, I'll have to undo all the mess. But it should be a reasonably easy way of dealing with it. Now, we'll get you out of here and we'll hook you back up to our current vacuum pipe system. Yeah, yeah I'll be done by then. Now, one thing to note. When I'm vacuuming out here, you'll notice all these gas pumps are actually only taking out minor amounts. You could use huge amounts of uh, mini pumps. That's usually pretty good, but if you've got the power to go with large pumps, it usually just speeds things along. They're, when they're down at this point, the mini pumps are actually more cost efficient in terms of power. But the most important thing right here is try and have the whole atmosphere in here of one type. If this atmosphere here was all different and there was carbon dioxide, chlorine, um, natural gas, that kind of stuff all mixed together, sour gas, then what would happen is when these pipes meet here, they'd actually clog up because only one gas can share a pipe segment at a time. So trying to vacuum out mixed gases is really, really painful. Try and avoid it if you can. Now, we'll also lock this door. Actually, I'll just leave you on auto. I will just allow no one through it. That's actually a far, far simpler way of doing things. Uh, actually, nope. Trying to actually finish the power on that, are they? All right, finish the power, then I'll lock it up. Actually, we'll make that a higher priority. I really want to get this sorted. Now, once that's done, we can release that nasty carbon dioxide, and then I'll probably sweep out this whole area again, and then I'm going to have to redo the automation. But as you can see, we're still slowly but surely filling this whole place up with magma. Now, this design is a hybrid, so do bear that in mind. If you have a volcano, you 
don't need to actually tap into the magma biome. Uh, just look up the the magma boiler design I've got. It's, it's listed in one of the tutorials. That one there, you just basically stick the magma volcano in here. You'd have your tank about this big, and the magma volcano does actually produce enough magma to keep this running indefinitely. You don't need any extra geothermal to keep it topped up. I just made this hybrid, so it basically covers both designs simultaneously. If you didn't have a volcano, you would probably position this maybe in a, a more convenient location. Uh, for example, there's like there's a huge chunk of magma right here you could tap into right there. So I probably if I didn't have that volcano there and I have to have to build it on that side, I might have built it closer to this spot so I could uh, get the magma out that way. But this is not actually that bad a location. When I'm finished draining most of this, I can actually crack up here and I can release these two pockets of magma, or well, a little bit of this one as well, and I can let them all pour down here into this tank. So there's actually an awful lot of geothermal here. I could theoretically drain all of this section here and hook up these two areas together. No real need to do it, but it would be an entertaining uh, little project. Now, you are all done, so... Oh, yeah, there's no gas pressure in there. Go! Um, hmm... Hmm. Okay, deconstruct you. Deconstruct you. And what I'll do is I'll wall that in up there. It'll give me a bit of a bigger area that I'll have to vacuum out, so it'll take a little bit longer, but uh, it shouldn't be the end of the world. And I'll be looking over here. A complete vacuum. Exactly what we were looking for. Well, in that case, let's build in our walls. Uh, deconstruct all. Also, I'm going to want to mop that up. I don't want any crude oil in this tank. I want this to be pure petroleum. And since this is in a vacuum, we don't really need to insulate anything too well. Plain old igneous rock should do just fine. Now, yeah. have you finished all of that work? Yes, you have. And dust your little dupes. Okay, once that's done, I can manually go down there and open that door. I'll just come in through here, pop down here, open the door, and then, well, then we'll have uh, the fun shenanigans of removing all that gas pressure. Okay, and then, oh, I'm going to want to delete all the junk in here. Do I delete you? And I've also run an awful lot of power in here. Actually, I might leave that power cable there. I'm going to need it for the plumbing later. I'm going to have to stick in a liquid pump. Nice. Uh, deconstruct. And now time to get rid of the actual gas pumps themselves. Yeah, I'm really curious how long it is before this game is going to become really, really slow. I'm already down to 13 to 15 frames per second. But I suppose my base is starting to get a little bit large. It's going to get even more complicated when it has to start working at the fluid physics in here. Actually, should I seal this in yet? Yeah, actually, let's get working on that. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, we done, we done, we done. Yes, we are. Uh, we'll move all that debris into storage. And we'll make that a high priority one. I want to get that all out of there for now. I don't want that steel falling down there. I might potentially be unable to sweep it out afterwards. Yeah, we have plenty of storage up there. you got to give to those dupes an industriousness. Ah, industriousness. I mean, this one dupe has been assigned to this task for, well, quite a few cycles, but they've really moved an awful, awful, awful lot of magma. The volcano, I finished examining it, and it's it was in a dormancy phase, so it's not actually going to be active for another seven cycles. All right, come on. See, I put this hydro sensor right there. Uh, the reasoning behind it was... Right, one second, I'll put you two open. Uh, the reasoning behind putting the hydro sensor right there was... I didn't want them accidentally putting so much magma in here, it came up and started touching the mesh tiles. Uh, that could lead to problems if it started melting. So I wanted to make sure that the, this got toggled sooner than rather than later. I don't want it actually going up just one tile. Like if it goes up one tile higher, that's fine. But if it goes up two, it's going to encounter the mesh tiles. That's gold amalgam. Even if it was iron, it'd still end up melting. And I'm not making all of that out of steel. That would be just a waste. No. Also, duplicates walking across it would get horribly scalded. Now, someone can actually open that door. You know what? Hurry that along. We want to get this up and running. And I want to actually have a little bit of testing play around with it as well. Uh, oh, magma, the petroleum tank. Yeah, there we go. Gas is pumping. 27 kilos. That might take a little time. OK. 
Okay, and then we're going to want a liquid pump down here. Power for our liquid pump. How are they still there? Um, actually, we'll run you through the wall. Looks nicer. Uh, how are we looking at it? Okay, we're already down to grams already. That's perfect. Okay, I think I'll fast forward this a little bit while we wait for the vacuum pumps to catch up and for our duplicates to build the actual uh, tank itself. Back to you in a wee bit. Okay, we also want to put in a pump here. Actually, I want to start putting in the plumbing. We need to start planning ahead and stop being so blasé about this. Now, uh, we can use just regular liquid pipes for the early phases of it because this is all in a vacuum. We don't have to worry about temperature transfer anywhere here. And once we get up to there, I'm probably going to start switching over to insulated pipes. And uh, we'll go with igneous. We don't need anything too stringent here. Actually, this is also a vacuum, so, hmm. Actually, yeah, why waste? Now, I'm gonna wanna build that up here and tack, just basically plug it right in there. And uh, there's a water pipe right there. So actually, let's just build it in reverse. That's usually simpler. Okay, we'll tack that on right there. Uh, another jump right there. The second jump right there. Actually, how much ceramic do I have? Uh, a metric crap ton. Right up. we'll use ceramic there. Uh, it just helps keep the heat out of this area. Um, you can go straight down through here. Nice, and then we'll just switch back to igneous rock. Just the petroleum coming out of the, the boiler is gonna be about 125 degrees, maybe 150, somewhere around there, depending on how hot it is on the way in. So I'd prefer to, well, I just prefer if that heat didn't leak into the upper half of upper half or outside the oil biome. Now, how are we looking down here? MCG. Okay, we're almost done. Perfect. Actually, we should be start getting that little temperature thing where, yeah, up here it's already a vacuum. Soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, I started changing the thumbnails. A uh, couple of people commented they, my thumbnails all look identical. I, I'm kind of lazy about that. Uh, I'm not really a, a YouTuber, so to speak, so I just was putting up, changing the text and leaving it at that. So I'll try and put in at least a, a picture relevant to whatever the subject matter is or whatever project I'm building in that episode, just to help people out. Now, okay, we got that done, that done. Uh, we've got power coming down from there. I'm going to have to sort out the automation on this as well. I'm not sure there's much I can do though with that thing sitting right in the actual core of it. Uh, that cable actually, okay, we can go with that and that one can go across like that. And I'll have to make sure all these doors are on auto. Everything else, perfect, let's check, power. Good stuff. Yep. Settings, 500 kilos on this. Uh, this one, this one is going to be at 400 and ooh, we might be looking for 403 degrees. If the temperature is above 403 degrees, you're going to disengage, but we're not going to activate you just yet. If we activate this when the magma hits here and we don't have any oil in this yet, which is going to happen if there's a if this is already set to 403 degrees, it's going to cook everything in here to 403 degrees. And that first drop of crude oil that comes through will instantly flash to sour gas. That will mess everything up. That will be bad. So I'm going to leave it disconnected here so it's not drawing heat until the petroleum starts to hit the plate. Then I'll care about it. Now, uh, one other thing I want to mention is, yeah, I was looking through here. See this 1600 degree abyssalite. Yeah, if... I let anything touch that, any of that oil touch that, some of it's going to flash to sour gas, it's going to cook this whole room. Um, so if you ever see me, like over here I sliced to this abyssalite earlier and I took chunks off it, that's because I've gone through off camera, I've gone through these and meant, okay, yeah, yeah, they're all good. See, like all those ones are 200 degrees, things like that. I could slice through all this abyssalite here and oil can touch that just fine. It's only when you start to see stuff that gets into, well, I'm pretty cautious. Uh, I'd like to stay below 500 degrees above that there's potential like that piece there if i let any crude oil touch that i'm going to have a sour gas problem in this area but just about everything else here i can slice away if i really wanted to and i probably will slice uh, i won't slice that piece but i might slice one more layer off this just to give myself a little bit more room but at a later date now 
Uh, this oil tank is actually falling a little bit lower than I'm comfortable with. It's not that bad. It's just uh, I have I really like to have a good stockpile. And since we've already removed all of this sour gas that was preventing me from tapping into this, I'm just going to let all this oil flow down. That uh, petroleum there is a result of the molten slicksters, and the molten slicksters are a result of the magma leaking. It drove the temperatures in here above 100 degrees. And if you look at the percentage chances of molten larvae, basically if the body temperature of the, the creature goes above 100 degrees, a normal slickster goes above 100 degrees, it starts increasing the chances of them laying molten eggs, which then, well, they eat carbon dioxide and actually excrete petroleum instead of crude oil. Personally, because I build petroleum boilers as a default, I prefer having regular slicksters just because I'm going to put it all through a petroleum boiler anyway. Uh, this petroleum won't cause any problems though. If it does get sucked up by the pump down here and dumped into our petroleum boiler, it won't make a difference. It will just get spit through, heated up a little bit and spit out at the end. It's just uh, it'll go in smaller packets, which could be annoying. Okay, we've got a liquid tank. I'm also going to have to pump all of this out of here, actually. I might start bricking this in. And how is that not done yet? You know what? I'm going to skip forward in time. This is taking way, way, way too long. Okay, and we're done. But a, a quick note here. Um, you'll notice here this gas is exiting. If I was to delete this vacuum pump, that pump right there, that gas would all stop in the pipe. It, it wouldn't have anything pushing it. There's no bridges on these. And this has happened to me before where I've actually managed to delete a pump while there was gas still in the line. And then when I go along and delete the line afterwards, the gas in the line is released. So maybe take a pause for a second and make sure that the gas pipes are clean when you're doing a vacuuming. It's really annoying having to go back and, well, you, you've seen what I've had to go through to try and get this up and running. So many mistakes. Now, uh, I want to actually let that door close again. So we're going to put you back to auto. Actually, that automation can be flipped. Oh yeah, there's nothing in here. <laughs> yeah, when there's no when there's uh, no gas in an area, temperature sensors kind of become. What the? Why did he make that? Uh, cancel deconstruct on that. Why is there? Why is there carbon dioxide in here? <laughs> what just? Okay. Damn it, damn it, damn it. We are, we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Uh, please bear with us while we sort out these problems. So, after some minor technical difficulties, um, yeah, everything seemed to turn out okay. Uh, we seem to have gotten everything out of there. There's nothing left. It's vacuum everywhere. Let's see up here. Yes, vacuum, vacuum. It's all vacuum. So let's deconstruct that first. We'll, we'll do the door second. I want to make sure there's definitely nothing in here. Uh, do I have to worry about that door having something inside it? Maybe those, no, the doors can't get, gas can't get trapped inside a door. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and we'll make you a high priority deconstruct. Actually, there's a dupe right now. Ah, that's what's going on. I'm being a moron. Yeah, there's actually gas in here, and when this door opens, the door lets the gas in. So I was trapping gas in there. Uh, okay. My bad. Another skip forward in time. Okay, technical difficulties have all been solved. Uh, the person responsible for this stupidity has been... Oh, wait, no, never mind. Okay, now, now the technical difficulties have been resolved. And as such, we can now go about deconstructing and... Actually, getting set up for the next stage of this. Uh, actually, I want to wait till the door is closed. I don't want to drop any gunk down here just yet. I'm not going to actually harvest the igneous rock that comes out of this magma. There are ways you could do it. Uh, you could set up auto sweepers, do some oil, uh, droplets of oil to cool the auto sweepers. I can, I, I'm just not bothered. I have 1,600 tons of igneous rock. I don't need any more. I think I worked it out one time. Even off a minor, even off a major volcano, I think you could feed about two hatches or something off the the, the magma you're getting. So it's not really worth the effort. Um, so I'm just going to let the stuff accumulate down here. It's just simpler. You now, uh, power. Okay, this whole thing's a complete mess, and I need to sort it. First thing, automation. Uh, we're going to deconstruct that one there, and we're going to want to put in. Memory toggle. Right about there. 
automation wires and making them out of steel. Yep. That goes to there. That continue. Whoop. Nope. That's good enough as it is. Now, what's supposed to happen here is this temperature sensor is going to detect when the temperature here goes below 430 degrees. That means the magma has lost its uh, oomph. As in, it doesn't have enough heat to keep converting petroleum at a reasonable rate. At which point, it will signal the drill to mine out the hardened magma. It's turned into igneous rock. Then this, this door will be opened at the same time and the mined igneous rock will drop down here. Then once it's finished its mining, and when I say finished its mining, I've basically set a timer up here. Uh, this filter gate, where is this? Yeah, 20 seconds. So after 20 seconds, it'll go, okay, that's enough time to mine out those two tiles. The bottom one here will close, this top one here will open, and a chunk of magma will fall down. Actually, I'm going to deconstruct you, and you better not get in there. <laughs> I don't want to have to accidentally kill, or if, if you do end up in there, you're going to die. Right, move debris into storage. That's igneous rock. I need to be using obsidian. This is definitely going to be touching nicely molten magma. Okay. Now, I also stuck in a little bit of a fire pole down here. I figured it'll make my dupes a little bit faster on the up and down. I was tempted to actually replace this with um, plastic because it is a vacuum. It's just I'm still a little bit paranoid about... No, get out of there. Yes, your timing is exit. Okay, and one last one in there. And, okay, so that's connected. Doop, doop, all done. We are almost ready to fire this sucker up. Oh, plumbing. Okay, so we're going to go to insulated liquid pipe, and actually we don't need to care about it being insulated. We're just going to use regular pipe made out of igneous rock. So the crude oil is going to go in there. The petroleum is going to come out this direction. So we'll have that petroleum head over here. Hmm. Yeah, how am I going to do this? Okay, I want overflow petroleum to be dumped in here. That means that's going to go like that. Okay. So by putting in this bridge there, this means so long as there's petroleum going along here and 10 kilos of it, it won't suck any petroleum out of our reserve tank. Actually, we are going to cancel you. But we do need an overflow system, so the overflow is going to go into the reserve tank, and in that case it's going to be this. Basically, if the petroleum is coming up here, and there's nothing up here consuming it fast enough, the excess petroleum will get dumped over here. Uh, we're going to make you out of insulated pipe. The reason I'm using insulated pipe just for these chunks right there is to do with... Uh, I can explain this. The heat transferring into those tiles. I don't want the heat transferring into those tiles. It's unlikely to boil the crude oil. It's just that I really am very paranoid about things breaking down. I like to make things as completely maintenance free as possible. Uh, we'll use some gold amalgam for you because that is our most plentiful resource. And then that will, so that means excess petroleum will get dumped in here if it's not being burnt off when it gets to the other end. And is our, all this piping done? Yes, yes it is. Exit. So once we get this running and the petroleum starts flowing up this direction, this currently has priority, but once we've got a full flow going, we'll turn off the other, we'll deconstruct the other one, or our current petroleum refinery. Okay, we are pretty much good to go. Hmm. Okay. So, ah! I know what I forgot. Hmm. I really should watch my tutorial again before I did this. I need to get up there and I need to deconstruct that tile, but I can't get up there while this drill is in the way. I need to put in a ladder. I can't put in the ladder while the drill is there. So deconstruct the uh, robo miner. Uh, put that door to auto. Get a couple of ladder segments up there. Uh, you're set to 430 above. Where is automation overlay? Wait, I want this to be sending out a red signal when it hits, so this is going to be greater than 430. If it's above 430, 
if it's above 430, I want you to be sending out a red signal. This would make, if you're above 430, be sending out a green. Don't want that. Okay, so we put you below. Okay. And then once all that's done, I have to deconstruct those two ladder tiles, sweep up the debris, and then deconstruct this tile up here. Now. Yeah, we'll deconstruct you now. Excellent. Okay, we are going to... Yes, I know how to do this much faster now. Shipping. Robo miner made of steel, right there. Oh no, can't put that in there. I need to get that uh, wire built as well. Awaiting delivery. Okay, and we are not going to let Arc Dog out again. No one is allowed out. Okay, Arc Dog, you are going to deconstruct these two ladder segments for us. No! <laughs> I wanted you to stand over here. Okay. <laughs> okay, now you're just stuck in there. Okay, we'll make these priority eights. You, you've probably got some lunchtime coming up. As our magma pool looking. All right, the pressure in here has not gone above 500 kilos. Come on, someone come in there and help them. Is that set to both sides? Yeah, everyone can get in. Okay. Now we're not going to let our dog out. Um... And we are going to put an actual mining drill right here. By locking them in there. Oh. First we're going to move you to here. Yes, you're missing lunch, I understand. Okay, you're almost finished. This has been an incredibly difficult project, I understand. All right, now you can go wherever you want. In fact, we'll just leave you the same as everyone else. Off we go. And we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you hit this point and you've got everything lined up and you think you've got it sorted, save the game. And now we're good to go. All right. Drill set up. Ah, missing power. One moment, we'll be back with our previously scheduled programming in pretty short order. Yeah, this one was much simpler. All I did was just crack open the side of it. Uh, so I could get in at it. Okay, that's that done. A little bit of a fast forward here until they get those bricks done. And then we can actually flick this switch that will load up the first chunk of magma. And then after that, we're going to have to turn this on. Actually, do I have... Yeah, I have a hydro sensor ready to go on that one. Perfect. That means I can do this. Wait, no, it's already on. Oh yeah, I haven't hooked that up. And uh, this we can turn to off. And we're gonna hook up the plumbing as well while we're at it. Yes, it's gonna go there. Hey, right, what's left? Hey, right, she's swept, she's clean, she's good to go. Save, yep. Okay, we're just about ready to fire this sucker up. I'm going to let a little bit of crude oil get in. Uh, uh, everything's set? Yeah, yeah, I do have everything set. So, we'll fill up the magma dropper. This is the power of the magma blade. It basically controls how much magma flows in. It's about 60, is it 60 kilos a second? It basically limits it, so you don't end up jumping in a whole lot more than you want. Oh, excuse me. You want about, uh, what the? Okay, I'm going to have to watch that on instant replay. That looked like it's just sort of solidified in, oh, the temperature shift plate interacted with it. That's why it looked like it solidified in midair. That's because it did solidify in midair. Okay, I'm going to dig that out. Hmm. And actually, while I'm digging that out, I'm going to load up the next batch. We're going to drop in another 
Betcha Magma. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay. That one didn't simplify. I suppose it was preheated. Uh, we'll load up the next batch. Now, we're going to turn on the petroleum, or the crude oil, I should say. Uh, Okay, petroleum starts flowing. You will deconstruct this. This is our on-off switch, but we don't want this interfering with the smooth operation. This needs to be gone and stop sending it a signal. Otherwise, it's going to interfere with this temperature sensor. This temperature sensor here is what controls this whole section. However, it doesn't work outside of a vacuum, so in a vacuum. So it needs to have this liquid around it or a solid around it to actually give temperature. Um, Okay, it's set to 430 below, extant. We're going to fast forward this until the blobs of liquid get to the top here. All right, here we are. So we're going to engage this. That's going to turn on the door. If the temperature is above 403 degrees, you're going to open the door and stop injecting heat. Once it hits 403 degrees, this will turn into petroleum. Now, this is a little bit tricky here. What? The carbon dioxide in here has very, very minuscule thermal conductivity. So the only reason this is detecting that this is getting to about the right temperature is because of the thermal shift plates. They're actually transferring temperature from the petroleum to the carbon dioxide around the sensor. However, it's not extremely accurate, as in the temperature sensor is going to be a bit behind the petroleum, so the petroleum is getting heated a little bit hotter than we'd like. But it's not hitting 503. Is it 503? Uh, where's petroleum? Uh, vaporization point 538 so say about 540 if it hits 540 we've got sour gas that would be a problem but it just works out about right thankfully that we don't have that problem and now the petroleum keeps dripping in slowly but surely and soon enough it will actually reach the top and start counterflowing back down until it does we're going to burn through a lot of magma really quickly um i think i'll actually move these slightly this is giving a blob up here I don't want that blob there. That, that's why I've put this hydro sensor here. If I put this hydro sensor one layer up, imagine this all two tiles higher. This blob would actually be inside the mesh tiles causing them to melt, and this would still be not at the required pressure. So I'll actually delete you, and I'll deconstruct you as well. And you, and we'll put in three more further down the line. Yeah closer actually yeah no that should be fine yeah right about there yeah and that's it so this petroleum is slowly going to bubble up and go over so what i'll do is i'll just fast forward in time a little bit until this magma is ready to cycle out and we're ready to see the whole thing in operation but this is going to really really met obliviate our power needs um next up i am going to have to tap into these oil reservoirs and i'm also going to want to tap into the cool steam vents on the map i've got two of them now, if I had not offended the slush geyser, I would have already tapped into those cool steam vents because I would have wanted the water already. However, in this instance, I'm probably going to tap into the cool steam vents now, use that water to dump into the oil reservoirs. The oil reservoirs will spit out the oil, and then I have a sustainable source of power. Not only that, this is this is actually free. Um, well, it takes a little bit of labor, but it's still free at the end of the day. I put water into these, the crude oil comes out, the crude oil gets turned into petroleum, we burn the petroleum in the petroleum generators, and for every kilo of water we put in here, we get 1.2 kilos of polluted water back. And polluted water, you just save it, it's, it's basically water. So that means we're effectively generating power out of nothing. Just a little bit of automation and wiring, and we've got, at, well, 3.3 kilowatts of power per oil reservoir forever. And along with that, we get 0.2 kilos of extra water from each one of these and a bunch of carbon dioxide which yeah carbon dioxide is looking actually oh yeah i hollowed out a bunch more space that's why the pressure dropped so i'll just fast forward it and uh, we'll come back when this is about to cycle out so this uh, uh this magma is lasting a lot longer than i thought so i'm going to actually have to get some work done in the meantime my dupes are starting to stand around idle so what i'm doing here is i'm just uh, extending my ladder system up a bit so I can get access to some of the resources higher up. I'm also going to want to get access to, where is this? Yeah, there's a steam, yeah, there's a steam geyser up here. So I'm going to want to get access to that at some point. So I'm just building straight up. Now to go with that though, I'm going to want to drain out all the water that's in here. And there's a bunch of polluted water lying around and I don't want it falling all the way down my ladder system. So I've just put in a liquid tank right here to catch it. And then I've just uh, put in this little chicane here at the top of my ladder system. 
I like to put in little chicanes, for example, here as well. Someone was asking me about this. Oh, who's name? Sorry, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, they were asking me why I had left this ladder system there. Or put the chicane in, because it because it would slow down the dupes. It's just to do with when they drop things. When they drop things down, they end up down here, and it's just... I, it just became a habit. Put in a little chicane in the middle of your base. It's why I also have my chicane here, and also one down here near the oil biome. It's just, the longer the ladder system gets, the more they drop things and have to go back and pick them up when they take breaks for lunch. So uh, I like to install those just at uh, key locations, just to make sure that their, their movement is a lot less. Now, how are we looking down here? Uh, you're down to 540. Still 100 degrees to go on that sucker. This has finally started pumping out petroleum. How much? Not a lot. Should be averaging about 5 kilos a second. We're putting 5 kilos of crude oil here through here all the time, and the counterflow is now completely saturated. As in, it comes in here at 127.5 degrees. By the time it gets to the top, it's just about 6 degrees away from uh, the target temperature. So this preheating it all the way going up, just make sure that we're spending the, the magma a lot slower. We're not demolishing all that heat too quickly. Unfortunately, this has made it so efficient that I'm going to have to skip forward in time again just to cover that. But uh, in the meantime, just know that this was going in just so that I could get up here and get access to more things. And, oh, hmm. you know what? We are going to seal that off. We do not want anyone getting in and out of there. Uh, that was sloppy. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have an exosuit problem where they can get in one side and out the other. Uh, get rid of you for a moment. Uh, where are you going to go? Yeah, you're not going back in there. In fact, no one's going back in there at all. And we'll make you out of... And we'll put your priority way through the roof. Please tell me there's no slime lung in there. Please tell me there's no slime lung in there. Okay, they haven't dug out any slime. Nice. And we're almost up on that glorious time. That glorious time when we cycle out the magma. So I'll just skip forward a bit and then slow it down when we get to the right point. Okay, we're almost there. This sensor is going to pick up shortly that... There we go. It's opened up the bottom door, activated the drill. And if we check here, the timer on this has started. You can see it going around. So this mining drill will have completed its mining operations. Come on, come on. Now if we check the automation, this is almost finished. What it is, it's going to close this bottom door. Okay, and open this top one. And simultaneously close this one up here. So this is going to close, this is going to open, this is going to close. Fresh batch of magma hits the plate. Yep, bunch of it instantly turns into igneous rock. I might want to remove one of those temperature shift plates. Wait, no, no, it worked. So that's going to sit there, and then this is going to provide more heating for the next batches of uh, batches of crude oil coming through. And that's it. Runs forever. That's all we got to do. This will now, it's maintenance free, and it just keeps churning out the petroleum for us. Nice. So up here, I've just been extending the ladder system, chopping across a bit, going up some more. I'm going to tap into that natural gas. I've also found something else over here. Can't quite see what it is yet, but I'll know soon enough. And once I find out what that is, we can see if we're going to tap into that either. Next up, I think it's definitely going to be, yeah, it's going to have to be tapping into one of these steam vents. Probably both of them. But I'll probably just do one and then do the second one off screen. They're going to be identical builds anyway. So I fired up a debug map and did a little bit of testing. I basically cracked open my old uh, petroleum tutorial. And it turns out, yes, there definitely should not be this temperature shift plate here. I really, really should have went into more detail through my tutorial. I've got an actual tutorial on how to build one of these. I'll link it in the description. It, give, it goes into a lot more detail just uh, so that you can be confident about building one of them. Uh, additionally, I also went through my own footage, and I actually found that uh, that moron had made some mistakes. Uh, the first one he made was this one here. I made this memory cell. When I replaced it, I made it out of gold. That was sloppy of me. And if you look at it here, the temperature is already at 876 degrees, and once that hits 1063, it's going to melt. So, um, yeah, I need to get that out of there. Uh, so we're going to deconstruct these two at level 7. So I want to deconstruct these tiles so hopefully the gold ends up on this side. If it ends up in there, it's going to melt. It might mess things up. I'd prefer to keep it out of there if at all possible. 
So we'll just, uh, I'll skip forward. I want to make sure that this build is, is rock solid before I put up the upload, just so that you can have the save file as well, have a look at it. And you, if you want, you can actually well, implement one of these yourself. Uh, it's just these things do take a lot of effort, so I want to make sure it's all perfect before you guys get your hands on it. Now, uh, yes, steel, that's what we want. Perfect. Oh yeah, this thing, you can rip this gate out, and so long as it's not in the middle of cycling, you'll be fine. This thing is, uh, yeah, this thing will still be giving off its red, red signal and going up there. Now, once that's done, I think we can call it a day. Um, I was flim-flamming back and forth on what I wanted to do next. I'm still not 100% certain. I was going to do uh, tap into the steam vents, but then I realized most of those are actually quite a distance away. And right now I've got a lot of petroleum coming in and therefore a lot of power available to me. So what I might want to do is actually install a transport network just to help speed up my uh, duplicates moving about the place. Also, another thing I noticed was this. Um, yeah, this petroleum is going up here, but this there's no real buffer system here. So basically, if this moves even a little bit, it's drawing from this side, which means I'm pumping constantly almost, which is not really what I want. What I want is a little bit of a buffer so that uh, it'll draw more from the petroleum boiler than it will from this pump. It's not a huge big deal. I am swimming in electricity right now. I have so much power I can generate. But what I want to do here is, uh, yeah, right about there. Yeah, this will give me a nice long buffer system. Also, I'm going to have to delete that pipe, which means, what's down here? That's petroleum. Yeah. To construct you. Yeah, what I'm going to do here is put in the overflow down here, and then that means I'll have a much longer pipe segment going along. Uh, see, oh yeah, that's causing all sorts of confusion. I don't want you backing up the system. Uh, liquid pipe deconstruct will make you a level four. Uh, the reason I'm putting in this little drop here is if any of that liquid gets down towards my petroleum, that could be problematic. Yep. Perfect. How are we looking? Much better. Okay, then let's replace that, and instead we're going to run the pipe. We're going to have the overflow pipe start off down here. Yeah, that'll... Ooh. You know what, I'm going to switch to insulated pipe up here. And then once that's installed, I can delete that other pipe segment. So yeah, I'm going to pan a bit to the right here. Um, Oh, we can disable this building now. We have actually got our production under control for petroleum, and I'm going to vacuum out this room. I'll probably put in an extra gas tank just so we have more natural gas storage. Yeah, so way, 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 way over to the right here, what we have is the cool steam vent. Where are you? Up here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start running my power grid, putting in a proper power grid, a big, large one, and then I'm going to actually start putting in the transport network, as in plastic transport tubes so that I can actually get my dupes to locations faster. They're getting a lot slower about getting to places. So I'd like to tap into this, but f before I tap into it, I'm gonna put in the transport network first. It should make things much simpler, faster, and just more efficient in general. It was definitely, I was getting slow down here, getting the dupes in to actually build and construct things. And, oh. That's not good. One second. Okay, I think I know what's been messing up here. This whole system was designed to run at 10 kilos per second. And the problem is, um, okay, how do I explain this concisely? The magma down here is, well, 1200 degrees, it's quite hot. And when it's injecting heat, as in when this door engages, the heat is injected really fast and the temperature sensor can't keep up. So this is set to 403, yet we're ending up with 407, 408 degree petroleum in here, which is causing this to overheat a little bit. Now, normally, if there's 10 kilos, if I was putting 10 kilos through here, the 10 kilos could actually handle that little bit of extra heat and wouldn't cause a problem. And that's the conditions I stress tested it under. So, hmm, I'm only putting through 5 kilos per second right now, and those 5 kilos per second can't actually handle a little bit of extra heat and are heating up just that little bit too much and cracking the pipes. So, as an emergency fix, I'm going to have to crank this all the way up to 11. Actually, we're going to make you an emergency priority. Yeah. I'm also going to have to break into here and I'm going to have to fix that pipe. Uh, I think for the time being, I'm just going to run this at 10 kilos per second. But to counteract this problem, I'm going to have to see if I can run this at six kilos. Well, uh, I'm going to have to run this at six kilos because I've got two oil reservoirs. And I'm going to want to run it at six kilos with an overflow of seven. If you had one oil reservoir, this is too much of a counterflow. 
Um, it's the, if I chopped off a leg of this counter flow, it'll decrease the magma efficiency, but it will also mean that there's less chance of this overheats happening. So if you've only got one oil well and you're gonna be stuck doing, well, 3.3 or three kilos with a little bit of overflow, yeah, you're going to need less of a counter flow heat exchanger. I'd probably chop off ooh, probably two of the legs, maybe even three, just because you won't actually need it and you're going to get overheats if you don't. Now, if you have built one of these and this is, it's too big already, I could actually start replacing some of these uh, these uh, pipe segments here with insulated tiles. It effectively is the same thing, at, or insulated pipes. It would be the same thing as shorting the counter flow. And why is no one coming to actually up that? Come on, that's a top priority, people. If this cracks fully, then I'm going to get this whole system back up. You know what? I am going to start uh, planning for the worst. We're going to put in some ladder segments here and on there. Actually, make that three ladder segments. Deconstruct you and deconstruct you. This is just going to grant my duplicates access, but that ladder system will also be able to pick, allow me to pick up that uh, igneous rock that's going to fall down there. I like to keep my systems clean. And where are my duplicates? Is it lunchtime? What's going on? Where is everybody? Okay. Must be near the nighttime shift section. Oh, can they reach that? Oh, they can't reach that. They can't get down here. Oh, well, no, they can. What is going on? You know what? I'll put in a couple of extra ladder segments as well. Yeah, it's going to be a nine. That nine priority thing is killing me. Okay, so now my duplicates can get in there, and I can use that to actually repair that pipe segment. Yeah, we're going to make you a level nine as well. Okay, well, it's a good thing I caught that at the end, actually. That would have been really bad if I had let that loose without actually this uh, problem being identified. Uh, so, um, yeah, we should be fine. I'm probably going to crank this up to 10 and leave it at 10 for a while. I have a lot of crude oil I've got to get through. So I'll just do a little bit of tidy up here. I'm going to clean up that pipe segment, make sure this is cranked up to 10. Actually, have, do we have 10 going through there? Yes, we do have 10. Oh, wait. Oops. That doesn't require duplicate interaction, does it? I thought that required duplicate interaction. Oh, never mind. All right, perfect. That's fixed. We'll sweep that all up and we'll leave it there. Next episode or next uh, video is going to be expanding out the power grid, putting in a lot of heavy conductive wire everywhere, maybe getting in a couple of power bricks so that we can spread the heat around or spread the power around, and basically just running a transport network uh, to all my major areas. Also, I've made this little stand here. I want to collect all the slicksters that are running around in the oil biome. I'm going to be putting in a lot of plastic traps. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this and good luck.